Thank you for coming to watch Dr. Smith's video today. We encourage you to hit the subscribe button and the alert button. That way you can get notifications when he uploads a new video. Thank you for coming today. So we hope you take the time to hear and think about, and if you have a book, read in the book about the concept and the topics that we talk about. They have a lasting effect. The intent is not necessarily to treat pain, but to make permanent long-term correction with your whole family and your friends. Thank you. Make sure you subscribe and hit the alert button. Have a good day. Have a good day. So today our discussion is primarily around blood pressure and the circulation. Now, why should we have a discussion around that? Well, the answer is two reasons, in my opinion. One, part of why they have, the reason they have these classes is to elevate your belief in this concept. The power that made the body is the power that heals the body. In, in simple terms. Lotions, potions, pills, surgery, they don't heal the body. They may, they may alleviate or reduce symptoms, but all healing comes from above, down, inside out. All true healing comes slowly over time by being obedient to laws. The universe is governed by law. I just saw a young, young lady who goes to bed, never bed dying, gets up at nine o'clock. Well, that's not in harmony with the universe. You can't get healthy and go to bed at midnight. The body is not designed to do that. God intentionally changed the season so that some seasons we get more time in bed, like now we're getting into winter, sun goes down early. That's until Edison came along and made the lights. People went to bed when it got dark more than they do now. Now it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter that we have more sick people now than ever before and we have more people who have the autoimmune disease that are self-destructing so you have to be in, in harmony with the laws now a comment on health relative to our discussion the body by divine design is made to survive even the worst of circumstances. And they've pro proven, proven that many, many times all over the world. Like right now, we have millions of people who are near or who are living in a survival mode. They're probably eating once every couple of days. They may be eating only bugs or roots or leaves or some simple food. That's an extreme, and the body still lives. When it's in Colorado Springs, I was around a lot of military, so there's a lot of history of survivors of the Vietnam War who had been in prison camps for years and survived under the most extreme conditions. Now, we're not talking about them, but the idea is to help you with this discussion help you have more belief in the concept that the power that made you is the power that heals you. And it comes from, it's a gift to you from, from God. But to be healthy, you must adhere to higher laws. You must adhere to principles that have always been true and still true and always will be true. 
that allow you to live in, the, in a state of health that's a level of a B, a B. You have to do a certain thing to be at that, at that level. And the heart and the circulation is one of the biggest. If you look up the question, the answer to the question, what is the leading cause of death in the world? What do you think it would be? Heart. Somebody? Heart. Heart. Circulatory, circulatory problems. Heart and the, and the problems that are associated with downstream with the circulation. So today we're going to talk about the heart. Now, part of the reason I talk about the heart is to help you understand again how, how fantastic it is by divine design. Each of us have been given a heart that's about the size of two of our fists. That's about how big your heart is. The heart has different chambers. The first chamber is where the blood comes in, the venous blood. That's the blood that's dumped the oxygen into the cells. It comes back into the heart momentarily and then is pushed up by a valve into the lungs. In the lungs, it dumps off the waste products, it picks up oxygen. Then it goes back down to the heart. So it's right side heart, gets bad blood, goes up in the lungs, comes back down into the top of the left heart, then drops, goes down into the bottom of the left heart, the left heart is what pumps the blood out into the body. Now, that's a big deal. But let me help you understand how little of a deal it is. The heart pumps the blood to only about 17% of the body. So you probably stretch your head and say, why only 17%? Well, I, that's a question for God. But by divine design, that's the way it is. So how does the blood move around through the rest of the body? Well, let me explain. It first goes into arteries. The biggest artery is on the left side of the heart. It's a descending abdominal aorta. Out here, it goes down bigger than my thumb, has a lot of blood in it. Then it bifurcates, it splits, goes down legs. It also lets blood into the intestinal tract. That's we have the, the one in the middle. It puts oxygen into the gut, into the kidneys, and the legs. Well, those arteries, get progressively smaller. And as they get smaller, they turn into, they change the name to arterioles. That's a small artery. And from that point on, the blood is not pushed by the heart. It's moved by what's called peristaltic action, like, like when you milk. Same as when things move through the gut. There's, you have circular muscles that go around the arteries. And they have a rhythm effect and they move the blood down to smaller and smaller and smaller arteries. Finally, they get cleared down to the very smallest and then they're called capillaries. A capillary is so small that the red blood cells go through the capillaries single file. So when you look, when you're looking at the live blood analysis and you see all the little red blood cells, they squeeze through capillaries very, very fast, but single file. Pretty cool. Then when and they dump the oxygen, they pick up some waste product, 
and now they're headed back to back to the heart. They don't waste product in the lungs and you breathe it out the waste product out. If you have good chest expansion and your lungs are working properly, about about 75% of the poison that leaves your body goes out the lungs. I saw a lady today who had bad breath. Why had she had bad breath? Because her gut was toxic. So what, 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 the bad breath are the toxins coming from her gut back up to the veins. So the kidneys and the, lung, and the lungs and the liver are all overloaded. So we need to detox her. Does that make sense? So you have to drink more water. Drinking water helps. Helps to reduce the pollution. I like this statement. The solution to pollution is dilution. <laughs> That's one of God's laws. That's the way he washes the streets and the forests and the rivers. We get new water to dilute and clean it out. Now, all of this happens extremely quick, all the time, and you don't have to think about it. It's all by divine design created to help you maintain life. Now, red blood cells are made where? In the bones. How long, it, how long does it take to make a red blood cell in the bones? About two days. How much new blood do you get? You get about this much every day, about a third of a cup of new blood every day. Your body makes millions of cells every minute. Millions of cells. How long do they, how long do they live? An old, tired out, red blood cell lives about 120 days and done. So what happens to the old, tired, worn out red blood cells? Well, again, by divine design, God has fixed, created the body that will recycle them. The body is a master at recycling. So where does that happen? Well, it happens mostly in the liver. The liver breaks them down. Yeah, also, it's also helped by the spleen. In fact, the spleen kind of filters. Like you, you're a good cell, you keep on working, or you're a bad cell, go to the liver and we're going to recycle you. The body takes them apart, it reuses the parts, and makes new red blood cells where? In the bones. In the bones. In the bones. New red blood cells. 95% of all cells are made first in the bone. We talked about stem cells. A lot of, a lot of you are taking the magnet stem to help your bones make more new healthy stem cells and red blood cells too. So let's go back to the heart. How much blood does the heart move? Well, let's talk about a medical thing. If you have an echocardiogram, they measure by listening to sounds how much blood is pushed out of your left side of your heart every time it beats. By divine design, the left side of your heart is overbuilt. So when the, when the left side of your heart, a healthy heart, squeezes the blood out, it squeezes out about 50% of the blood, blood that's in the heart on that side. At the highest, 70%. In 
if it's under 40%, then you label medically chronic heart failure. That's officially what I have, chronic heart failure. But now that my heart attack, my it's called the extraction factor. That's how much blood is extracted from the heart, each heartbeat. My heart was producing 11%. They said you're going to die. It will never get above 15. It was sold by different heart specialists. Your heart will never get better. You need to have a heart replacement. So for one year, I get a marketing sales pitch from the experts. You know what an expert is, right? The doctor in another town. I was sent to Denver to the big hospital to the experts and they somberly looked at me and looked at all my tests and said there's no way for you to survive without a, a new heart and you qualify we've, we've checked your insurance and it will pay us six hundred thousand dollars for us to give you a little, little pump to take your heart out put a little pump in hook it back up hook it onto a battery and you we can live a relatively normal life, except you have to stop twice a day and recharge the battery. You can never get it wet. It's a, you'll never bath again. I said, well, I've made my decision. <laughs> if, I, if that's my story, then I'm, I'm going to go to hell. I'm going to die. You know, I'm not going to do that. So I left and they were all upset. And I started to do the things I'm going to tell you to do that's helped my heart to get better and better and better. The last test I had, I'm clear up to 35. I have another test in December. I hope I'm over 40 because now I, I can do things. When I came home, I could walk up the stairs because the heart did not put out enough blood. So that's the extraction factor. Now, how much blood do you think the heart pumps each time it pumps? I said about half or a little more of what's in the heart, which is about, it pumps out about a third of a cup. That's one third of a cup. Lola, if I hired you to do a job, to take this cup, go over to the, you have a ditch by your house, and we had a 2,000 gallon horse trough and they said to you, Lola, I'm going to be you to dip out of the grid and fill up the 2,000 gallon horse trough <laughs> with it. That's what your, your heart does every day. 2,000 gallons of blood goes through your heart every day, a third of a cup at a time, give or take a little bit. That's a lot of I think your arm would get tired. <laughs> uh, isn't that amazing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it does it all the time. I have a question. Yes. What What is a heart murmur? A heart murmur is, of course, when you have some some kind of a congestion around the valve. Now let's talk about that. Now I'm, I'm going to tell you how to. Quietly, without admitting knowing about it, commit suicide. Oh. Any tickers? <laughs> Not today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the deal. Countries who consume the highest amount of sugars have the highest heart rate. The country of Russia, right now, publicly admits more than 60% more than of their population dies every year from heart problems because of sugar-like compound. What do they call it in Russia? Vodka. Vodka. <laughs> Vodka is a form, alcohol, alcohol is a form of sugar. Sugar is a form of alcohol. Well, we don't do it like that. We do it by eating candy bars and other cookies and stuff like that. So what, what happens 
in the, in the body when you put alcohol, alcohol or sugar. Now, when I talk about, when I use the word sugar today, I'm not talking about the, the sugar that's in a banana. I'm talking about the sugar that came from sugar, 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 sugar. sugar beet and sugar cane. I'm talking about the pure, wow. white, refined sugar. That's what it was. So when I say sugar, that's what I'm talking about. Sugar, sugar burns tissue. If you want to do a personal experience, don't use any white sugar for a month. And they need to cook it with a sugar cookie. It will burn your mouth. Because your tissue has become more healthy and it's more sensitive. Well, why does it burn your mouth? because you have had enough sugar that you built up some resistance to it. So that's also what happens to the gut. When they finally get to the, to the blood, it burns the, the, the lumen, that's the lining on the inside of the, the little arterioles we talked about and the arteries. So what does the body do? It creates what's called a protective coat. What is that protective coat called medically? Cholesterol. cholesterol. Oh yeah, hardening of the arteries. We need to put you on a statin drug. Well, God is way ahead of him. He knew about that. So he created fruits to clean the blood. What kind of fruits clean the blood? Well, if we look around the world, and the cultures who eat lots and lots of fruit, they have the lowest heart problems. France is right at the top. Korea, Japan, a lot of the Oriental, because they eat a lot of fruit. What do fruits do in the body? They clean. They clean. If I could list some, some for you to get around here, it would be raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, or you can save time and money and buy some for a veggie, which has a whole list of fruits, raspberry, cranberry, strawberry, blackberry, and a lot of others, cherry. This is cheaper than buying them at the grocery store and saving them and using them. Why do we do that? To clean the arteries, to clean. So, so, um fruits clean and so what about bananas what this is interesting because um some of it's higher in sugar if okay let's talk about it, this this was for another class but because you asked i shouldn't have put it up but because you asked i put it out <laughs> yeah I brought that's, that's fine <laughs> so this banana and this banana have the same amount of sugar. Oh, the green and the... And the yeah, but, but it changes. As, as the enzymes go to work on, as the enzymes in the banana go to work on the complex carbohydrates, the banana processes <coughs> the sugar. Differently. In your body. It break, no, it break in, the, in the banana. It hasn't left yeah. the banana yet. So if you eat, if you want something to something to create satiety or a sense of fullness, eat bananas that are more this color, and they serve as a pre-digestive material. You've heard of like a prebiotic? A prebiotic. A prebiotic. It will have less oh. it will have less ability to elevate your blood sugar than if you were let the banana process get over to this side. Okay? There is a prebiotic in in bananas. In any fruit that's unripe. But you don't want to eat a green banana. Well, it depends on what you want to eat it for. Oh. I don't recommend eating this. 
I see you wait at least till there. I like to get, I like to wait till the banana is done as part of the work. So I don't have to do it. And I'd like to eat them over here and here. When they get to here, I say to my wife, would you make some banana bread? And then add more sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Honey. Honey. <laughs> now when you're eating all those fruits, is uh, sugar and cream okay to put with it? <laughs> cream, not <Cream>. sugar. <laughs> cream. Thick, heavy whipping cream. Can you put honey? Well, you don't need honey if you're going to add it. And raspberries. <laughs> like some, I like it. If you have raspberries that are not ripe, you can sugar them if you want. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can. Because what's the sugar going to do to you? Well, we're talking about honey. It helps. Mm -hmm. Honey is honey. It's totally different. It, it's more sweet. It, I'm sorry. It's sweet, but it's not. It's a whole food. It's a whole food. Who designed honey? How long does it take to make honey? It takes a lot of work to make honey. And if you go to the health food store and stand in front of the honey honey counter. You have light, medium, dark, clover, you know, apple blossom. When we were in Mexico last week, I was coerced <laughs> gently <laughs> into taking a cooking class with Audrey and Deborah. So we had a Mexican lady in her home teaching us how to cook Mexican food. It was torture. <laughs> torture. Torture. <laughs> because we made several dishes and it was mandatory to try them, eat them. And I've told you many times in class, don't eat after you eat. Well, we started at 11, finished at 2.30. Oh. <laughs> and they said, oh. <laughs> so two days to overcome that. Oh, but it was so good, wasn't it? <laughs> The, food, the food was good. Yes. But I've said, I've said that, I'll said i say it again. It's a lot easier to fix hunger than full. <laughs> well, are you going to give it class on cooking no. then? <laughs> that was no. fast. I, I told you that story to tell you about honey. <laughs> in, in, in Mexico, they have little tiny, tiny bees. They make very dark, very thick honey. It's very sweet, it's very medicinal, and it's very expensive. <laughs> it's hard to get because it's, it's a rare product. She gives the name, I don't remember, Manuka? but or, I don't no. remember. I, th I thought, if, it, if I can't buy it here in the grocery store, I'll probably never see it again, but so it's gone. <clears throat> yes. I was getting Charlie horses. Pardon? I was getting Charlie Hortz's and you told me to eat a banana. I have eaten one banana, not too many bananas, every day since. No Charlie Hortz's. Oh, good. Really? Change your circulation. Wow. So should I keep eating one banana a day? <laughs> well, experiment. Stop to see what happens. It actually changes your cir circulation, bananas. All sugar, all sugars affect your circulation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the best sugars are those that are most complex. They take longer to digest. Okay, I, I'm going to pass around the test. When will this video be up on YouTube? Hopefully within about a week. I'm still looking for the skin one from before your trip. <laughs> We didn't get that one. No video. I we missed the skin. I only did that two days. Well, I'll do that again next quarter. Bit very, very good class from the skin. Were you there? Okay. So I told you how to get sick, how to kill yourself quietly. <laughs> Eat lots of sugar. It will ruin your heart, your blood vessels. You have all kinds of circulatory problems. 
probably skin rashes, kidney problems. No. So if you stop eating it, your body will start to heal itself. Oh, yeah. The good news is, your body is healing itself every day, even if you eat it. But it will heal faster if you do less damage. So, I made banana bread yesterday with the huge intention not to have it. But I had a piece this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had the fruit and vegetable drink. But I put the protein powder in it for the first time in a long, long time. And right. vinegar and oil. And my tongue's all broke out right now. Yeah. Is that from the sugar? Probably. And so my gut's like that too. Probably. Woohoo! Now I know. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> Knowledge is power. <laughs> yep. Number one. Normal health of blood pressure is 110 over 70. True. True. When I went to school, it was 120 over 80. Why the change? Because at that time, point in time, they were claimed as normal, common. So mm -hmm. commonly they were examining people who were sick. And they finally discovered that people who were healthy have lower blood pressure. So they changed the answer to the question. Number two, the body will automatically respond when more blood is needed to heal weakened tissue, causing an increase in blood pressure. True. True. Yeah, you go to the medical doctor and they say, oh, your blood pressure is 180, we need to give you a drug to lower your blood pressure. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Why does it work? Why does it not work sometimes? Because you need it. Because your body says, settle down, politician. We're going to do it our way. So it keeps it up there to provide the blood. Number three, the ideal difference between systolic and diastolic, that's when the heart beats. When the heart, when that ventra, ventricle squeezes, that's systolic. And when it stops, they fill up again, that's diastolic. The blood is still moving. There's still pressure in the arteries. If the arteries are like a good elastic hose, then they, they expand and contract 40 to 70, 40 to 60 difference. If you came and had blood pressure like 200 over 110, you have a big gap. I don't need to worry about you having a stroke or heart attack, even though you have high blood pressure. But if you have 140 over 120, now there are only 20 difference. Why? Blood vessels, too stiff. More likely to crack. More likely to have a stroke or heart attack. So can stiff ones, or they call it hardening of the arteries, um, those heal over time as well if you change your protocols or what you're doing? Everything. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Everything. <clears throat> the textbook says that there is a continual turnover of all connective tissue and it adapts, it adapts to the stress that's under. So if you stress it with sugar, you, you get build up. If you don't, the body goes and you start to heal. So if the difference is under 40, does that mean stiffness? Stiff, too stiff. Too stiff. It doesn't change like it should. Like an old hose. It's stiff. It's stiff. Number four, green food. Green food, that's this. Raw salt, BFF, and water each have positive effects on the circulatory system. Very true. What's BFF? This. It's made up of fruits. Oops. Fruits. Mm -hmm. Is it? It's called blood Nit flexibility formula. Nitric oxide. It, it helps the body. It, it doesn't make nitric, it doesn't, it is not nitric oxide. It helps your body 
make nitric oxide, which helps with blood flow. This, this is one of the best products ever. I recommend you take these as prevention. I think one or two of these a day is very good to prevent cardiovascular problems. I have an old farmer who lives up north. He comes and buys four or five of these at a time. He puts them in his pocket but during the day. He'll eat maybe three or four of them. And he claims that that helps him more than anything he's ever done. Just taking BFF. What is real, what's real salt? <clears throat> real salt comes out of the earth. It's, a, it's, salt. A, it's a brand. I recommend that brand because it comes out of Utah. Real salt is dug straight out of the mountain. They crush it up and sell it to you. I have little bottles I sell for five bucks, or you can buy it yourself in big bags. You can buy it at health food stores. It's all natural, nothing added, and it's all the minerals that were in the original clean ocean. So, okay, okay go ahead. I was just going to say, in Salt Lake. No, not Salt Lake. That's, that's natural salt. Yeah, but guess what's in it? Pollution. <laughs> it's there's so much pollution on Salt Lake that would be very toxic. Okay. But the original lake that covered the, the Great Bonneville Lake. Pardon? The Great Bonneville Lake, you know? Yeah. yeah. That kind of salt. Yeah. So Himalayan is the same but just on a different continent? Yes. Mm -hmm. and by again by divine design. The real salt on every continent. If you want to do some interesting study, study the history, the history of salt. It will blow your mind. Do you have any? I here? do. Okay, just so. Okay. Do you have the bags too? I think I have one bag. I, I, buy, I buy 25 pound bags, I get a discount, I pass them on. I just think I sold my last, I may have one bag left. <laughs> if, I have, well, if I have it, if not, I'll, it I'm, I'm well. going to order more. Ragnar's test. I'm not going to talk to you much about Ragnar's test other than you can do it at home. I put the instructions on the, on the bottom of the sheet to tell you exactly how to do it. I like to do it frequently because it gives me an idea of if, if I'm getting more healthy or if I'm backsliding. It gives me an idea if I need more rest or more salt or greens. It helps me to know if my blood vessels are flexible or not. You can do it at home. Oh. Number six. I'm sorry. Down here, it doesn't say what does it do if you need more greens and rest? What does it do if you're sufficiently... If you need more or if you're sufficiently Okay, let me explain it to you. If you if you take the blood pressure, you could go down to the bottom. Uh -huh. You take the blood pressure and then you and you stand up and take it again. Mm -hmm. If it drops if it drops any, you need more rest, or you need to support the adrenal glands, you need more greens, it so should go up ten. If it's go if it goes up any, you're getting better. If it goes up 10, you, you're doing really good. And it drops, the, the more it drops, the, the more quickly you're going downhill. I, I had a lady the other day that said to me, I've been taking up the adrenal, do I still need it? I said, I don't know, let's check you. I took her blood pressure, her blood pressure dropped 20. Her blood pressure was high. I said, you're doing something bad. What are you, what are you doing? What are you doing that's bad? And she she's pretty good has a pretty good understanding of what to do. She she's doing a lot of good things. I said, okay, what are you not doing? Are you are you getting enough sleep? And she said, Oh well I get about seven or eight hours. Well guess what? When you're seventy years old, seventy or eight hours seventy I'm sorry, seven hours will put you on a downhill slope. You have to have more. And the magic number, if you want a magic number, write the number 63. If I gave you a time card and said, okay, 
I want you to sleep 63 hours a week. If you do, I'll pay you for sleeping. <laughs> you say, well, I can't sleep. It's okay, we'll turn the card around and go to time clock B. If you're laying in bed resting, punch in, and rest, you might rest from two o'clock in the morning till four. You didn't sleep, but you're still in bed. That's worth 80% of the value. Hmm. And that resting is not doing anything else. Yeah, just not laying watching reading, a movie, not listening, listening to, to a phone, talk. not mm -hmm. listening to music, it's just laying in bed. If you want to do anything, quietly in the mind, pray. Oh, bless your heart. No listening to... No stimulus. No external answer. stimulus. Quiet. So if you have multiple deep holes, if you're trying to fill up your bucket, you have to get you up to a B. 63 is the magic number. 63. 63. Hours. That's nine hours. If you're good at math, that's yeah. nine hours. And I might show up one day with t-shirts. I give you all the t-shirts. <laughs> it's a big number. 63, 63. Yeah. if you do it, if you do it. Thank you, Dr. You're welcome. Now, while I'm marketing, if you <laughs> didn't like one of these, you can have it. T-Zone, for some, some reason, sent me oh, a few of these little bottles. I personally don't mm. like them. Mm. But I have a bunch of them, if you want. Mm. If you want one, mm. I'll give you one. I got a few mm. here that have some more in the garage. I'd like to get rid of them. The use for taking. Okay, going on. So if you take a blood pressure medication, you're going to have it might lower your risk a tiny bit. And if you look up online, blood pressure medications there, are lots of them. Sometimes they work, and sometimes they don't. Work. If they work, if they work, then the part of your body that needs more blood gets short changed. Ooh. Seven, the majority of blood move, the majority of blood is moved through arterioles and capillaries. True. True. The heart distributes blood only to a 17% of the body and arteries. The rest is moved by smooth muscles, bound on the lumen of the arteries and veins. True. So most of the blood is in the small arteries and arterioles and veins. The healthy heart has about a 55 to 70 percent extraction factor. That's the amount of blood that the heart squeezes out of the left ventricle each time it squeezes. And what's normal? About a third of a cup. The heart muscle gets the best. The first, it only uses 5 percent of the blood. So it comes out of the lungs, goes into the heart, the heart says, I'll take it. <laughs> But only need a little bit. The heart pumps about a hundred thousand times a day, pumping five or six quarts per minute, a third of a cup per beat to a thousand gallons a day. True. Each blood cell passes to the heart about once a one time a minute. That's a slow but that's a slower red blood cell. They can go a red blood cell can pass to the heart three times in one minute. That's how they're going very, very fast. That's throughout the whole body, back into the heart. Go from your heart to your toe, back to the lungs, heart back to the heart, mm -hmm. through the lungs, back to the heart, back around, three times. Wow. So that's false, 12 is false. 12 is true. true. At least, that's a, that's oh, a, a that that's, a, that's a slow over. Now, again, the, the purpose of this class is to give you a greater belief in the body's ability to manage itself, to maintain survival, and with a little help, help. Any questions? If you have a complete heart block... You're dead. 
have a pacemaker that keeps it going. So the last time I, every time I've gone in, it's been blocked more and more. The last time was a 100% heart block. That's not possible. Really? So some juice is getting through, right? That would have been your last time. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what the so, cardiologist said. Well, that's, that's and like, the pacemakers keep that's like going on, going on. That's, Good. Well, thank you for saying that. It's a marketing pitch, but no. Just say your mind at ease. For example, you have five, lo five lungs, right? How many do you need to set alive? One. One. You have two kidneys. How many, how many kidney function do they need to have to stay alive? One or less. less than half of one. You have five lobes in the liver. They all do about the same thing, one of which is to help recycle red blood cells. They do about 300 other things. They, they, do, they do more things that medical people even can comprehend. They don't know all of what the liver does. Hmm. So how much heart function do you really need to have to be alive? So alive in quality of life. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So my hope is this class will extend your life at least five years so give that banana bread to your neighbor that you don't like <laughs> i like my neighbor do you have any good pastor of us <laughs> i like you guys so i have a comment if you've got time so i was listening to i have leg cramps so can't found this um, site and i was listening to it and i thought that sounds like dr smith because he said the first thing was salt. You need real salt. And that first, that causes leg cramps. The second he said was that causes leg cramps if you don't have, have the salt. Sufficient. And real salt. And they talked about real salt, mm -hmm. not just the salt. And then he said that if you overdo, that's the second cause, like if you hike and you're not used to it. He talked about electrolytes, but then he talked about medications, and I went, oh my goodness, because Medications for cholesterol, which I'm trying to get off of. Medications for strengthening your bone, which we do the T-zone instead, or, you know, plates. And then um, hormone, some hormones. It was like everything you've been talking about. And then, but then it got down to what's serious, that it was like blood clots. So my question was, how would you know if you're having a cramp or maybe a blood clot? That's a good question. Sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you don't know, but, but it keeps us in mind. If you, if you have relative, relatively clean blood, you won't have a clot. If you, well, think about it. Some of you have had a lot of blood analysis. If you have a lot of Rolo, and the cells are sticking together, see, they, and they can't go through the capillaries, single file, the backup, then you can have a cramp, and you can have a tissue that does not get enough oxygen. Okay, and that's that's more likely than having a blood clot that's going to go up to your heart and, and kill you. Okay. So like, I, I got down everything else that you said about, but how much of the heart do you need? To, pardon? Like the lungs, you only need one. How, how much of the heart, heart. do you need? Yeah. Well, again, the heart has multiple compartments. The, one, the, the, the waiter maker is the one that apply, allows congestion to the arteries on the left, the ventricle that creates less my heart go, less blood flow to the heart on the left side. That's the one that's gonna kill you. That's the one. When they do open heart surgery, they do a lot of different things. I mean, if you have a heart problem, they have good insurance, you're gonna get a lot of stuff. <laughs> so you need your whole heart. You need the whole heart. <laughs> you need the whole heart. But you can you can survive off much less than 
you think, and much less than you're told. Thank you. Julie's situation was that her, the top of her heart wasn't talking to the bottom of her heart. They talked to each other. Is there a magnesium salt, sodium, and magnesium? So back then, let me, let me make a comment about that. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, as far as I can remember, every person I've ever treated for back problems that's had open heart surgery has had a dowager sum. And that comes from head forward posture, which affects the nerve flow that goes to the heart. So that they, they have this statement made that the top of the heart, not talking about the bottom of the heart. I think that's, in my mind, that's a stretch in the truth. Could be, but I don't think that's, they don't talk to each other. So today's class, you would recommend all these things on your... I, I, I use them all because I think they're, I think my, my heart is getting better and better and better because I use an abundance of, I use all of these.